Greetings all, Raphael X here with another video. Click on the subscribe button, the like button, leave a comment, share this video, and all that good stuff. All right, let's start with a prayer. In the Patris of Fili, Spiritu Santi, Amen. Gloria Patri et Filio, Spiritu Santo. Sicutera in principio, in nunc et semper, et it secula seculorum, Amen. Ave Maria, sede sapiencia, ora pro nobis, in nomine Patris et Filii, Spiritu Santi, Amen. All right, always animated by prayer, giving glory to the most blessed Trinity, God, three persons, one nature, three who's and one what. We're getting into our topic now, which is, um, I talk a lot about this, both of these issues, because they're definitely hot topics, Satanism and LGP, and today we are going to put them together. So basically, there is an intimate relationship between Satanism um, and LGBTQIA. Um, you know, it's interesting. They actually thought about, they said it was a rumor, but there were pretty substantial rumors talking about um, putting an S on LGBT, S standing for Satan. And obviously, the Satanic Temple would love that. So first of all, the satanic temple differentiates itself from the church of satan and this is interesting they make this distinction let me share my screen real quick with you here and this is a pretty long and in-depth um let's say article or explanation on the satanic temple's website so they claim to be basically uh more open more tolerant you could say less rigid and less, uh, we can say believing in an actual Satan, even though they say the Church of Satan doesn't believe in an actual Satan. But, I mean, it's obvious, you know, the founder, LaVey, of the Church of Satan out in California there, he definitely, I mean, he he did, he dressed as a devil, he did liturgical rites. Um, he was very serious, uh, Satanist. I believe he wrote the Satanic Bible. So this is a very in-depth uh, differentiation and they show how essentially they are um more important right more actual we can say more in with it than the church of satan this is these are symbols here but both of these obviously are evil all right so going back to our topic what is going on here obviously so today the mainstream we can say the main satanic group is the tst the the, the satanic temple and actually, right now, they're going through, they're having their international, I don't know if it's international, but it's definitely the largest gathering of Satanists, I think, ever, at least in the United States, the Satan Con, the Satan Con. And many Catholics, other non-Catholic Christians are there to protest peacefully, praying. And a lot of these news sites talking about Christians bashing, like literally disrupting the Satan Khan. And yes, they are spiritually, but not physically, right? Um, okay, so let's go into our topic that uh, LGBT and Satanism, intimate relationship. Actually, really no surprise there. Let me show you this article. This is actually from the famous spokesperson. I think he's, I believe he's a co-founder. He has something wrong with his eye. If you ever see him doing an interview, pardon these um, ads on the side. I'm not a subscriber to the pink news, but... So we have to see these ads on, on the right side. Pick news from the um, from the uh, a, a source that is very LGBT plus friendly and talking about as something positive, the Satanic Temple is in favor of equal rights for LGBT plus people. And Lucian Greaves, he was actually on Tucker Carlson once and probably on, on Bill O'Reilly. He, he did some interviews on Fox News. You could check them out. But listen to what he says here. He says, it would be a conservative estimate to say that more than 50% of our membership is LGBTQ. So well, that's that's pretty inter that's, that's interesting. I think that's because they feel disowned and disenfranchised from the traditional religious institutions. Again, so basically, probably more than half of Satanists are LGBTQ and definitely with the A added onto it for ally, they're definitely allies. So they are 
if not directly one of these, they are definitely allied with them. So you have a population willing to embrace a religious identification that is boldly willing to speak out to the contrary. And look at what it says here, right atop this Bohemian statue, Polish statue. We're all Satanists, and it's not like we have tolerance for trans people or gay people or sex workers. We just don't effing care. And a lot of people in those communities appreciate that. And this is such a lie when dealing with the LGBTQ, because it's not about tolerance either. They don't even, it, it's not even about acceptance. What it's really about is they want everyone to celebrate them. That's what it's about. You don't, you don't tolerate them. You don't accept them. You must celebrate them, right? And we'll see this in a strong way this June, right? It just keeps getting stronger, stronger as the years go by in each June. Uh, Pride Pride Month. Originally, and truly, the Sacred Heart, the month of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Let's go back here. Some other articles I wanted to show you. And again, these are from these are from the lips. These are from the left. These are from the pro LGBT uh, QIA, all that stuff. The Satanic Temple. Uh, this is from out.com, another another site that is very pro LGBTQ. Satanic Temple says it will fight to the death, quoting, for LGBTQ plus rights, whatever that is, rights based on orientation. They believe that freedoms of others should be respected. So um, there's an older article, and this actually stems from their documentary they made, uh, Hail Satan, which is, I even shudder to say that, but that's the name of it. Um, God help us, Jesus Christ is Lord. But, um, yeah, as you can see, that they are very much promoting the, um, uh, they're promoting the rights of the different sexual orientations and even um, de uh, delusions, ultimately, you know, changing sex and all that. According to Greaves, again, the temple is also involved in pride parades around the country and vows to protect and fight for the gay community and their rights. This is what essentially they're about. This is the ultimate rebellion. The co-founders also say that he regularly receives death threats from whites, from white and Christian supremacy groups like the KKK. One problem is that a lot of the threats come through Facebook, and Facebook has their own policies on regulating death threats. They have never found uh, death threats. They have never found a death threat made against the Satanic Temple to be outside their terms of service. Okay. Um, but what I want to say here is that um, really the ultimate rebellion against God, and maybe the last rebellion against God, is a rebellion against nature, is a rebellion against the most obvious and fundamental realities. I mean, we know even the bones of, of people are able to be, you know, we're able to determine in their bones their, their sex. So sex is something that God gives us, and according to that, he has called us to a specific mis mission. So the LGBTQ uh, plus and all that, especially the T, the LGB is essentially different from the T. Because the LGB, you know, even bisexual affirms, the, you know, if you're gay, you know, um, LG, the G, the gay, and lesbian too, you, you believe in two sexes. But the trans, even though there's this distinction talked about between gender and sex, it makes no sense. It really doesn't. The true transgenderist, um, true transgenderism denies sexual, a sex rooted in biology. That's just the way it is. You cannot have this distinction between gender and sex because what you're ultimately saying is people are biologically a certain sex, but they think they are um, another sex and, uh, and that is true. That's called gender dysphoria, right? But they try to justify it. But there's, there is nothing in reality that points to them being a certain gender. So really, what you have to do, and many do this, the true transgenderism, transgenderists do this. Sex and gender are the same. There is no such thing as biological sex. And and I've heard people, um, you know, professors teaching gender studies and all that even say this. There is no such thing as sex. Um, so that is the more coherent position, logically. Well, 
logically in the sense uh, not based on reality but we're just talking about pure formalities and thinking is obviously absurd and not true so um so it's the ultimate rebellion against god again the most all obvious reality the ultimate rebellion and it is and uh, we can say the last and ultimate expression of satanism right of satanism and that's why they both go hand in hand all right share this last article with you which is a from newsweek um this is actually a very interesting movie nefarious if you see this here in the background i saw this some days ago excellent movie a movie that i think um will bring you closer to god and away from satan and um i think satan does not is definitely not is not demon inspired like these other hollywood exorcist slash devil movies all right, Satan is getting hot as hell in American pop culture. A newer article. I am your, oh, let me see here, right here, right here. Uh, right here. In uh, November 2021, Pew Research reported that 62% of American adults believe in hell, up from 58% in 2014. And pop culture appears to be taking full advantage of the curiosity that surrounds hell and its inhabitants. What's going on today is that hell is is seen in a less negative light I mean, you see in the documentary of hell satan i saw in the trailer someone said um you're going to hell and he said yes i believe in it and i wish to i wish that to be the case i wish to go there so you have people more explicitly wanting to go there it's scary um, you know Especially being Christian, you see more and more how the hell the world is descending into hell. Right? As Christ called the world, he called um, the devil the prince of this world. So the world has to, it's inevitable, descend into hell, right? Descend or, or become, rather, become more and more hellish, I should say. The devil is front and center in movies, TV shows, podcasts, and even children books children's books there are satan after school clubs while the proliferating satanist groups have their own political divisions i'll tell you one thing and this is based on many you know what many sound priests have said many of them being exorcists you cannot see any horror movies nowadays i would say unless it's like a classical innocent horror movie or something for a greater good you're seeing it out of necessity, um, whatever that may be. But seeing a movie out of pure curiosity nowadays, a horror movie, they just have so many satanic elements. It's I, I, I'm interested. I just see the trailers just to see what's going on. And it's it's dark. It's dark to the point where you just see the, just explicit satanic symbol, symbols, rituals even. It's... um. You know, one exorcist said a lot of these movies are opening doors, are opening doors. I saw a saint, uh, a, saint a priest, rather, um, his critique of the Pope's exorcism. And he said, I truly believe this movie was inspired by the devil. He said, if anyone sees it out of mere curiosity, I believe that they can easily, I don't know if he said can or will, open spiritual doors in their lives that they do not want open. It's scary stuff. This is scary stuff. Avoid the movies at all costs, except for these good movies. Nefarious, again, good movie. Not sensationalist, but God-inspired. The devil talking to teach us, uh, essentially theology. Many times the devil does speak the truth. And, you know, the devil is used in movies and, and in books like the screw tape letters of C.S. Lewis to convey to us his plot, ultimately, so we know what to avoid. All right, just a little bit more from here, and then we will um, end it here. So, yeah. All right. The devil's front and center in movies, TV shows, podcasts, even children books. There are satanic after-school clubs, while, while the proliferating satanic groups have their own political divisions. There is a really interesting, there's a really interesting podcast called The Exorcist Files, which I'm sure a lot of people who are watching my video have already checked out. Um, I'm going to leave it there. 
there's a, it, this all started with the movie The Exorcist, which was a bomb, right, in, in regarding creating interest, right, a cultural bomb regarding creating interest in these matters. It was absolutely amazing. And The Exorcist was, was pretty well done. Again, it was sensationalist. But it's not like these movies, the, the movies that are coming out now, Hollywood, um, like The Pope's Exorcist, which is supposed to be about a holy priest, Father Gabriella Morth. These movies show the priest essentially being afraid, right? being powerless, God being not being present, being powerless, the devil being in control, um, the devil doing pretty much what he wants, uh, not being subject to God. Right. And this is not this is not the case. Right. And that's why true exorcists or well, exorcists in general, you have to be true to be exorcists, at least for like, for a long time. They do not even see the devil. They just focus on God. The devil's like a fly, as St. Teresa of Avila said. Right. I see the devil as a fly. Right. Annoying. But I do not regard him. Obviously, we do regard uh, him. um uh, to the degree that we want to avoid what he proposes, but not out of, you know, some vain interest, right? We do not want that. All right. Well, with this video, I leave it at that. God bless you all. Take care until next time. Take care. God bless. Bye now.